And we're back. You're watching the World News on Myanmar International. I'm Randall Chamias. To begin our stories, Japanese executives looking for opportunities overseas are setting their sights on Myanmar. Representatives of more than 50 firms gathered there to learn about the planned economic zone, the Tilawa zone near the former capital, Yangon. Here's more. Japan's trade minister and Jetro, the Japan External Trade Organization, organized the event. 160 people took part, including Myanmar government ministers. Japanese business leaders call Myanmar Asia's last frontier. Interest in the country has grown thanks to Myanmar's democratic reforms. Myanmar's government has tentatively granted Japanese firms preferential rights to develop the Tilawa Economic Zone. Conference participants visited the proposed site. It's near Yangon, Myanmar's largest city. Some businesses will be allowed to begin operations there in 2015. Some bad weather is troubling France. Some 450 pilgrims were evacuated from the Catholic sanctuary of Lourdes in southwestern France on Saturday after heavy rains flooded the city and surrounding area. Several roads were also closed after the river gave the paw burst uh, its banks and flooded part of the city. Campsites in the area were closed. Rescuers used boats from Saturday at the request of the authorities to tour all the hotels and ensure everyone was safely evacuated. Officials said the sanctuary site would stay closed for a few days. The evacuated pilgrims were sent to nearby hotels or public buildings where they will remain until the flooding subsides. With the water and the mud, officials said on Sunday that it would take days before the city could return to normal. Meanwhile, Kenya's housing industry is making a boom. The 16th edition of the Kenya Homes Expo wrapped up in Kenya's capital, Nairobi, Sunday. More than 120 firms exhibited their products, ranging from new housing projects to building materials. Here, home buyers have a chance to sample what the market is currently offering. Most people who attended the expos are looking for homes, construction materials, interior and exterior decoration, solar panels, and landscaping ideas. Private exhibitors also rushed into the property market with international companies from South Africa, Germany, Turkey, and China showcasing their wares in this lucrative business, but with a few setbacks. This home expo will enable potential homeowners to have some hopes and encouragement to own a home one day. Moving now to China, the China Education Expo 2012 is open in Beijing. More than 500 universities from 38 countries and regions are attending the event to attract more Chinese talents as the country boasts the highest number of students in overseas. The market is becoming more mature and diverse. Here's more of that story. Xu Fang has worked in overseas studies intermediary agencies since 2003. She visits the China Education Expo every year to look for new programs and courses from different countries for Chinese students. She says that the market has changed a lot in recent years. The U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia are traditional destinations for Chinese students and more countries have joined this booming market. No matter what their family background, interests, or career plans, students can always find the right place to go and the right course to study. Now in its 13th year, the Expo has seen a rapid increase in the number of Chinese students going abroad from under 120,000 students in 2005 to almost 340,000 in 2011, accounting for 14% of international students studying overseas. A few years ago, business, finance, and computer science were among the most popular majors for Chinese students. Now more are choosing a school and course according to their interests and future plans, rather than just by ranking and popularity. Usually they choose uh, the uh, topics like engineering, all kinds of engineering, then economics and business is very popular, and then foreign languages. But they are widespread everywhere. I had uh, Chinese philosophy students in literature, cultural assets, uh, diplomacy, law, and so on. So 
16-year-old Liu Shiqi has a clear idea what he wants. I want to study engineering in Germany after high school. I've been to the country through an exchange program and spoke to friends who are studying this major in college. I have a passion for it. Besides more international communication, the change is also down to technical development. Students don't follow the trend like before. The internet helps a lot. Students can find out more about schools from their websites and communicate with schools directly. So their decisions are based on more solid considerations of their interests, career, and job market. Still in China, the 2012 China National Kite Flying Championship, an event competing for excellent kite flying skills and showing rare kites, concluded in Daishan County in East China's Zhejiang Province Sunday. 36 teams across the world with more than 400 kites made an appearance at the two-day event. The biggest kite in this event was one measuring more than 220 square meters and the longest one was more than 200 meters. The organizing committee set up a special zone for the public to fly kites for the audience to have a try in this interesting event. In sports news, Juan Martin del Potro won the Vienna Open on Sunday, beating little-known Slovenian qualifier Grega Zemlia, 7-5-6-3. The win gave the Argentine his third ATP Tour title this year and strengthens his case for a place in the season-ending World Tour Finals in London in November. Del Potro overpowered Luxembourg's Gil Mueller to reach the final for the second straight year after being given last year by Frenchman Joe Wilfred Sunga. Zemlia defeated second seed Janko Tipsarevich of Serbia in his semi-final. Well, I'm still uh, trying to qualify. I'm not uh, sure yet, but uh, I have Basel and Paris to, to get more, more points. I'm looking, I'm looking to qualify after 2009, so will be a, a big dream for me. I was doing my best. I maybe wasn't serving my best, but uh, I, I was fighting till the end. Uh, I think Juan played unbelievable. And finally, in golf, American Tommy Ganey clinched his first PGA Tour victory by one shot with a storming 10 under par 60 in Sunday's final round of the Mac Gladry Classic at Sea Island, Georgia. A distant seven strokes off the pace going into the last day of the penultimate fall series event, Gainey flirted with golf's magical number of 59 as he posted the 16th under total of 264 on the seaside course. The 37-year-old tied up eight birdies and an eagle to finish a stroke in front of compatriot David Tom, 63. Jim Furyk needed a birdie at the par for last course of playoff, but he bogged the hole for a 69 to finish alone in the third place at 14 under. Tournament host Love was a further two strokes back after closing with a 71, level with compadre DJ Trahan 69 and Zimbabwe's Brandon De Jong 65. And that completes our stories for today's World News on Myanmar International. Local news coming up next. Thanks for the company.